Good day to my jurors and to my thesis advisor, Sir Carlos Sauco. Thank you for taking the time to listen and evaluate my thesis project entitled Proposed Iloilo Central Monorail Line Stations, Enhancing the Commute Experience Through Corridor Architecture. My name is Riva Adolfo, and I hope this video informs you of everything you need to know regarding my thesis proposal. Before we start, I would like to explain the flow this presentation will follow. First, I will explain why Iloilo was chosen as the site and explain my site selection process. After, I will introduce why the monorail was chosen out of all other transport modes. Lastly, I will walk through my thesis concepts for each of the five stations. Now that you have an idea of the contents of this presentation, let's begin. The Iloilo local government has planned on constructing a monorail line for the city since the year 2015 and had conducted their pre-feasibility study to see if the ground was suitable for a monorail, as well as the initial need for it. The highway the first phase of the line will operate along is the old Iloilo Capiz Road, which has the highest recorded traffic, with a total daily average of 28,789 vehicles the data gathered by the Iloilo City Planning and Department Office. Iloilo, in terms of topography, is relatively flat and with plenty of open space. In spite of this, their road network is congested. A road widening project was completed in 2018, but traffic only went down by 10%. The local government's architect Keith Kamenya the head architect in the site selection process explained to me the six factors to be considered in the site selection process. First is connectivity, meaning all station sites should be, as much as possible, along one major road. Second, it should be accessible by foot and each mode of land transportation. Third, environment, meaning the sites and their surrounding environment should be able to accommodate the station and its users. Fourth. Each site should be located, if possible, within or close to a commercial zone. Fifth, each site should be in close proximity to schools, malls, hospitals, or any areas with an elevated population. And lastly, the topography of each site should be relatively flat. The first phase of the central line will consist of five stations along Old Iloilo Capiz Road. The sites given by the government are located in Unca, Dungon A, SM City Iloilo, Infante, and City Hall in Ortiz. All these sites are located in commercial zones, as seen in the local zoning map, which means these areas are highly populated throughout the day, as well as being located along a major highway. Moving on to each individual site, I will be explaining the SWOT analysis, starting with Unca Station. The strength of the site is it is located above a major highway and there is an existing transportation terminal next to the site, which allows direct connection to both modes of transport. Although being its strength, it is also a weakness, considering the need for construction above the road, therefore causing a short-term disruption in road traffic flow. Opportunities include the site becoming a center for transportation, since it is also next to a major transportation terminal. Further, it will be a future connection to the Iloilo International Airport direct line. The second station is the Central Philippine University Station, which is located in the Dungon A site. The university is a short two-minute walk from the site, making it an opportunity for a large daily passenger count in the station. The lot is the same size as Unca and also is located directly above the highway, which gives it the same weakness during construction time. The only weakness is there is a creek near the road, in which its odor may reach the site. SM City Station will be located directly beside SM, as well as having direct connection to the Superstore. The station is again to be built above the highway, causing traffic problems during construction time. The site is also home to opportunities for more daily passengers, since it is in close proximity to the new business center of the city. Old Iloilo Station is located in Infante. This was the old Iloilo Center, which is what the station is named after. This is one of two stations that will be built on grade because of the limited road space. The strength of the site is that it is a corner lot with entrances on two sides. 
the platform of the station will still be constructed above the road, which will still cause traffic below during construction phase. The site is in close proximity to Iloilo Doctors Hospital and UP Iloilo, however, is directly opposite a cemetery. The last station is City Hall Station, which will be in direct connection to Plaza Libertad and the City Hall. Like the previous station, majority of the station will be built on grade with the platforms above the road. The main opportunity is that it is in close proximity to government areas. Now that the sites have been explained, we will move on to why the government chose the monorail as the mode of rail transport. What led to this decision was the air pollution levels. Iloilo is planning to compete to be globally recognized as a green city, and to do this, the air quality needs to be above average. In the 2015 National Air Quality Report, it is shown that the air quality in Iloilo was worse compared to Manila, which is already considered above average. With this information, Mr. Arjun Marvin Calvo, the Chief of the Planning Programming Environmental Education, stated that mobile sources contribute to 69% of the total air pollution. The graph below shows the steady increase of registered vehicles in Iloilo City each year from 2013 to 2017, therefore is the main contribution to the air pollution. Knowing this, a mode of transport that transports a large amount of people but has minimal CO2 emissions is needed. The monorail answers both these questions, as shown in the tables below. Moving on to terminal design, let us first compare international and local examples. In most international train stations, there is use of natural lighting, which is enough to illuminate the entire space. In addition, integration of green spaces bring the natural outside elements inwards, making it feel like you are still outside. In terms of space, proper planning of spaces are large enough or well thought out to design of circulation to accommodate the expanding user population. Looking to local examples, I chose to study the LRT Line 1, as it is closest to monorail design, since all stations are elevated along with its track. Problems are the congested walkways, improper use of natural lighting, and wind paths, as well as little to no green space in and around the stations. The table shown below are the results of a conducted study in 2016 for LRT 1 which shows that users think there has been no improvement within the stations since they first used it. Now that we are informed of what our local train stations are lacking, I have formulated factors to be considered in designing the stations, starting with three major points. First, the environment within each station should embrace design principles that respond to local climate, like wind paths and sun paths. Second, is enhancing social spaces, including proper circulation and zoning, as well as bringing in greenery. Third is social, and enhancing the overall commute experience for the users. Other factors to be considered are making spaces flexible, use of natural factors, proper zoning, and clear wayfinding. The need to decongest Iloilo City roads is increasing, and a mode of transport other than road is required. In addition to this, overcrowding in existing railway systems is increasing annually as the population of the country grows, giving the users an unpleasant experience. The purpose of the thesis is to respond to the growing need to build an Iloilo central monorail line and also aims to answer the following questions. What appropriate architectural design solutions alleviate the problem of overcrowding in the commute sequence process within the station? What railway station design will aid in solving improper circulation patterns within the station? What design approach can improve commuter experience? There are two key architectural solutions that I use in my plans. The first being visually passive architecture, which uses the concept of corridor circulation. This type of design uses corridors to help funnel people away from specific zones. A good example being the arriving and departing areas of an airport. The only difference being that airports use separate floors. Corridor circulation will be used in linkages between entrances and exits and main platforms. Additionally, it will separate completely the entering and exiting passengers of each station, so there will be a smooth flow of circulation of users. Corridor architecture can also be seen in the building's form, where there is a single line of direction in the plan shape. To enhance corridor architecture further, Visually connective architecture is used. 
The name contradicts the previous solution of visually passive architecture, but the difference is that connective architecture uses walls, plant boxes, and other forms to simulate one's vision. While passive architecture uses corridors to separate zones and foot traffic, connective architecture helps in isolating these corridors. The overall form of the plan follows that of a single wave. Recently, Iloilo cleaned up their river, which their local population is very proud of. This is where I took my inspiration for my form. Another benefit of this is that there is a single prominent line, which is integrated into the circulation plan of the building. As seen in the zoning, almost the full length of the design is used as the concourse, which can be considered its own corridor. Moving onwards to the design concepts, each station has a similar facade with colors and materials being the major change in each station's design. Starting with Uncat Station, it is located next to a memorial park. The concept of this station is a dove about to take flight. This is seen in the roof of the building, where the different angles depict the two separate wings of a dove. This roof form is also seen throughout each station, because it acts also in the functional design, where wind can easily pass through the building. Neutral colors, like white and gray, are used as not to overpower the park. Central Philippine University Station follows the same concept as the university nearby, so users will automatically recognize their location. Colors used are red, orange, and white. SM is located in the new and modern Iloilo, where materials such as wood and glass are more incorporated in the design. This is also the station located nearby Iloilo River, which just underwent development. Therefore, the materials are similar. Old Iloilo Station is the first of two stations to have majority constructed on grade. However, it still follows the same concept for the continuity of the stations. The only difference is there is more greenery incorporated in the design, especially at the entrance. City Hall Station is built partly on Plaza Libertad, which is surrounded by government buildings. This station still has a modern facade, but blends with the surrounding buildings by using similar materials, like white colors and light stone cladding, to give it a sophisticated look. The following are other views of exterior perspectives of each station. Shown here are the old Iloilo station and City Hall station at different times of the day, to appreciate the station's facades further. Here are several interior perspectives, as the interior of each station is the same, so as not to confuse the users. The interior uses light colors of brown, white, and beige, which gives an overall welcoming invitation to users. Light colors also open up the space. Now that my PowerPoint presentation has ended, we'll proceed to the walkthrough in order for us to be able to fully experience each station. Entering users are welcomed into the station's completely open entrance, where natural light passes through multiple openings and a skylight. Light colors are also used to make the interior more inviting. The entire concourse is just one long corridor, the only thing separating the two different directions of circulation being plant boxes, which brings in greenery yet still fulfills its functional purpose. The ticketing area is slightly offset from the concourse, yet still with enough space to accommodate the user population. The area includes ticket machines as well as the regular ticket booths. The platform consists of two rows of automatic gates, the first opening when the exiting passengers depart the train and the second opening around 30 seconds later 
to allow smooth flow of circulation so that no two different directions collide. Exiting passengers are guided to a single exit ramp, which leads them directly down to security, where they can choose to either exit or use the station again if needed. Their corridor is completely separated from the entering passengers for both directions to have smooth user flow circulation. The first station uses light neutral colors like white and gray so as to not overpower the nearby Memorial Park. This station uses the same plan as the previously shown. The difference being the materials used. The colors on the facade follows the same color scheme as the nearby Central Philippine University. SM City is located next to the Iloilo River. Therefore, the materials used here reflect the establishments along the river, using glass and wood. SM is also located in the new Iloilo Business District, which explains the color scheme. This station is built mostly on grade, while the platforms are the only part of the building above the road. You can see here the different levels of roof, so wind circulation can easily enter and exit throughout the building. City Hall Station is also built partly on grade, but the colors and materials used are all light or white to match the surrounding government buildings. Thank you for giving me your undivided attention. This is the end of my presentation.